speaking to uh, this lady uh, who turned out to be the informant, with, which obviously led to everything. And he was right. just speaking so freely about, like, you and me talking about the, the uh Well, that's NBA the creepiest part about it. Is that, I mean, he's talking to this woman who obviously had a, you know, a really tough call to make at the end of the day. You know, she did the right thing for justice, but, you know, she's talking to him as a reporter, is my understanding. And he just lays into her about this, you know, his fetish and how he likes to have hidden cameras and do this and that. I mean... How, you can't allow that to go on. I mean, no matter no. what the confidence is. I mean, it's just it's just wrong at every level. And you know, I did see somebody on the CNN network think. I don't want to say that the person said it was okay that he did get a beat down in jail. I don't think anybody deserves a beat down. They're doing their sentence. I right. I don't glamorize things like that and. Uh, this person on the HLN network um, glamorized it. What was your take, or did you hear about this uh, alleged? Well, I, I heard about it. I mean, again, I didn't. I didn't really cover the story thoroughly. I mean, I was, you know, on CNN and interviewed about it. Uh, you know, I know what you know, and I have my insight uh, from covering these different stories. But I mean, that happens in prison. I mean, when when yes, when you're, absolutely. one of the one of the fellows who got caught in the original Predator series was doing six and a half years in federal prison. And wow. um, he, he was in the TV room one night, and um, and I got this from a very good FBI source, and they're watching To Catch a Predator, which was <laughs> ironically very popular in the prison community. And it was his episode that comes up, and they, they didn't know oh why my. he was in prison. So they look at him, they look at the monitor, look at him, look at the monitor, look at him, look at the monitor, and all of a sudden he had kind of a rough go for the rest of his sentence. And I don't think he was beaten or anything, but, you know, there were obviously cat calls and there was some, you know, verbal abuse. I think he was protected. Probably him, scared you know. to begin with, you know, well, yeah, being in exactly. the prison. I mean, what day, what day, what day are we going to figure out yeah. why I'm here? Right, exactly. But that's, you know, that's prison life. That, 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 that is so tough. And my lawyer, my defense attorney, that's a very close friend, says, quote, if you, you, you could go to jail for almost anything. And he even said this, uh, not laughing, he said, murdering is treated less as uh, as, as a bad thing in prison. And I want to oh, emphasize yeah. that. <laughs> than um, child molestation. Oh, yeah, exactly. So there's no question of that. Did you get a chance to catch uh, the 10-week episode of the FX story, of uh, O.J. Simpson? I saw some of them. I'm a little behind, but I, 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 it, it was pretty compelling stuff. I mean, I covered some of that okay. back when I it happened. I do want to play a small clip for you, and I do want to ask you about the, the, the sure. story because I think it's amazing. So let's hear it. I want to play for the audience in case they didn't sure, know sure. what's going on. Here is Absolutely. a little piece of My name is Jeff Massa, and I am the production designer for American Crime Story. We're in 1994 and 1995 on this show. We have a great team who did an amazing job recreating it. We certainly matched a lot of the architectural details to have people walk into that set and really feel like they've just entered a time machine. You really feel like you've stepped back into 1994. Barbara Walters called me. Barbara Walters? Yeah. Uh -huh. She knows you? She talked to Mom and Bruce, too. Bruce is Amos. He won the Olympics! In general, when we're starting the show, I rough out a ground plan, I do a perspective sketch, put that together with pictures of the places we've already shot, and then some ideas for the decor of the room. And I have a great team of prop makers, painters, shoppers, swing gang, construction, set decorator, to put it all together. Seeing everything for the first time was so wowing because the level of detail that's gone into this show has been impeccable. I think the production design is just fantastic on this. The sets are so amazing because they're so accurate. They really spend time for detail, little things down to a T. We've done such a good job of getting all the details right. It's almost like you could intercut real footage and our footage and you wouldn't know the difference. 
there's a lot of specificity and as an actor that's exactly what you want in your performance and on your surroundings walking through the set has been fantastic look at this office we're sitting here in Cochran's fancy office right now with all of its glass windows and stuff. It irks the bejesus out of me. Our offices are very simple, very humble. I feel all the frustrations of Marsha and Chris as they try to do their jobs. As far as sets are concerned, I probably enjoyed the home office of uh, Robert Shapiro. I used probably every inch of that house in my expressions as his character. <sighs> How do I get rid of those 911 tapes? The set that we're in now, the uh, Shapiro study, is completely designed. And that's really what we like to do. In this case, John Travolta is in this set quite a bit, so we wanted to have a, like, a space that he can really perform in and, and feel comfortable in. We had some painters that did some really, really beautiful work. I think the production design kind of nailed it. We actually got to shoot in Kardashian's house where all this went down. Father, please, please. Please have mercy on him. The bathroom there was spectacular. Just knowing that we were in that space where he might have prayed, more than anything, that location was, for me, it was significant. The courtroom is so iconic. Everybody in the world has seen that courtroom. Our directors and our DP are shooting that courtroom in a way that nobody ever saw it. Absolutely 100% not guilty. This is the courtroom which is almost exact in size. We stretched it by about six feet just to give the actors a little bit more acting space. You can see more depth, you can see more life in the background. It's eerie when you walk in there going, I cannot believe that the clock looks just like the clock, the camera in the wall and the bailiff's area. It's wild and it does a lot to help you go there. For anybody who lives through the OJ trial, I think they get excited by how close it's come. It's an incredible replica. Walking onto the set and seeing that courtroom for the first time, seeing the dream team all lined up next to each other, you kind of gasp. Oh my God, there's Judge Ito. Hey, there's Bob Shapiro. They're talking to each other. It's, it's always magical. You are hardly in a position to tell me what's acceptable or not on television. God, good check. When we have our cast, who all look amazing, all in that set, all in their wardrobe, hair and makeup, you really feel like you've stepped back into 1994. There's sort of nothing you can do to forget the importance of what it is that everybody felt that they were doing during the trial. Okay, Chris, uh, that was for my audience. The People vs. Uh, OJ just ended this week. You were saying that you saw some of it, um, the, the parts that you did see. How accurate do you think it was to the actual trial uh, of what you got a chance to see? I think it's pretty close. I mean, the interesting thing to me about the whole um, show is that, you know, when I covered it, and I, it wasn't like I covered a gavel to gavel. I mean, I was out there for a little bit of it, and then I was Not out like there. Not like <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, it was, you know, I did 20 other things at the same time, but, you know, I, I was close enough to it to get a um, feeling for it from when it happened to the when the verdict came down. But right. um, my kids, who are my sons, who are 24 and 22, who were, mm-hmm. you know, one and three when it when it went down, you know, in 1995, are fascinated. Right. They're riveted by this show. And they're both in journalism. One works with me as an assistant cameraman and associate producer, and the other <laughs> is about to graduate from college, and he's interviewing for uh, entry-level positions on air. So, you know, they, they follow this stuff closely, but they, they are absolutely riveted by it. And I said, well, you kind of knew this story, right? And they're like, Dad, we were toddlers when this happened. And it's, you know, I remember that, and, and, and it really was, a, you know, from the, from the slow speed chase, you know, in the summer of 95 to the trial, um, it was the slow it, speed one chase of the stories. was in 94, the trial was in 95, right? 94, yeah, exactly. Uh, but it was, it was just, it was a very compelling, compelling story. You, you had this great athlete um, who really didn't have publicly that much of a tumultuous life. I mean, there was a divorce right. and remarriage and a divorce. And, you know, there are whispers and allegations, but nobody ever saw it. I mean, in, in the general public, nobody saw it coming, maybe in the close circles of O.J. and 
Nicole and the friends, but you know, it was it was just oh my god, what is? This? I mean, I remember watching it in my, in my family room, knowing that I was going to get on a plane any minute to have to go cover it. And they had the split screen for the basketball playoffs and the you know the slow speed change. Yes, the New was, York was, Knicks against the Rockets. Yeah, exactly. It was <laughs> phenomenal. It really was, and I was ten, but I I learned about it as a big <laughs> sports fan. I yeah. was listening to a program called the Mike and the Mad Dog. I don't know if you're familiar sure. with it. Of course I am. Okay, yeah. they covered it from gabble to gabble with you know like with hatred for that verdict. And I followed documentary after documentary, but I can't tell you how much of this one really put you into the courtroom. This one shows you the lawyers, how much work they put into it from both the defense side, both the the people uh, side, uh, the judge, the tension, everything from the nine months that they're there. And you just see other things that you're not privy to, the the, uh, jurors, you know, how much work that they have to uh, do, how many jurors were disqualified. And it, it, to me, they really they really hit it, hit it on the head, and I had a chance to look up some of the rating numbers, and it was staggering. I mean, they got in the fours for, 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 for a Tuesday night oh, yeah. show, and I know that yeah. you're in, you know about these type of uh, Nielsen ratings, sure. and a 4.5 is, is an amazing number for a Tuesday night non sure. uh, um, on a cable network. You would agree, right? No, it's a big. That's a, it's a huge number. I mean, a, 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 a point seven is success, so a four right. is a home run. You know, right? I mean, right. really. I mean, that's you know, depending on the demographic and everything else. But yeah, no, it's sure. it's, a, it's a big deal. It, it really is. What do you think, though? Uh, just besides me, like you, that, uh, like I asked you about to catch Brother, What do you think? You know, even people that saw the trial lived through it, like yourself, but there was just this cult faction that were just in love with Tuesday night, 10 p.m. I must must see TV because I would read the tweets and, you know, hashtag I'm addicted. I seen all, all things like that. Like, you know, they just could have not got enough of this. And I'm sure if they could go back in 2020 hindsight, they would have made this a 20 week episode knowing how big it well, went. Sure, yeah. But in your opinion, what do you think? They were so uh, they were so into this OJ phenomenon. Well, I think, I think twenty one years a later. Things. One, one generationally, I mean, it's it's something that you know my sons had heard about and known about, but didn't really watch the trial like I did in my generation or covered. And so they get a chance to relive it, and it was really a phenom. I mean, think about it. You have this stellar athlete who is a television personality who is married to a beautiful woman. And they get divorced. And there's this horrific murder, slow speed chase. Did he do it? Is he capable of doing it? Is he not? Then there's this dramatic trial with all kinds of side stories. I mean, Mark Furman. Mark Uh, Furman, yes. I mean, that was was a big deal. You had the the glove, the dream team. You know, Mm -hmm. F. Lee Bailey, who, you know, was once... (laughs) You know, a, a huge deal. Who who right. was hired to be a part of this? I mean, and, and the rest of the lawyers. And this is before the Kardashians became a household name. And so right. it was a, it was a it was a it was a combination of things. I mean, it's just just a confluence of events that made this huge. And then you had what many people would argue is jury nullification, that he was you know guilty, but he. You know, was able to escape this, and all the characters who testified, Cato Kalin, you know. Yes. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, this is, right. this is the trial of a lifetime. I mean, it just it hasn't happened before, and probably will never happen since. This this culmination of, of events and, and uh, confluence of characters that is just not going to happen again. Well, there were a lot of trials. You know, I'll say Casey Anthony. I'll say Jody Arias. That happened yep. after that. Um, I don't think they compare in any way, but they were riveting. Like, give me your thoughts on Casey Anthony. Well, you know, again, this is you know, you got this young woman whose daughter is dead, and, and uh, uh, five clearly, years coming up to the uh, anniversary of yeah. her acquittal. Yeah, and again, you know, I didn't cover it personally, so I don't want to get too far into it, but. 
you know, it was just, again, one of those things that just captivated America. And, you know, in a breaking news lull, 